I'm here in the United Arab Emirates for the fifth edition of the UAE Tour, the next stop on the men's world tour calendar this year. I'm on the lookout for hot tech. Now, this is actually the Yas Marina's Formula One circuit behind me, and all the teams for the race are based here. There's a paddock down there. They're all concentrated there, which means they can't escape me and my grubby little hands and my prying eyes when I'm on the lookout for hot tech. I've already seen some cool stuff that I've never seen before. So um, let's, go, let's go get our hands on it, and I'm gonna show you. This bike was at the Tour Down Under, but Alex wasn't allowed to film it because it wasn't out yet. Officially, it wasn't released. This is the new Super 6 Evo from Cannondale. And well, here it is. Uh, some things that instantly stand out are the seat post when I've seen it in, in person. The seat post and seat tube are, are really thin, really bladed. It really does look considerably more aero over the previous one and very nice when you see it. It's got a threaded bottom bracket, which I can see down there. So they've done away with press fit. That's quite a big departure for Cannondale. There's a really did pioneer press fit and the front end looks a bit more aero and it's a bit more neat the way the cables tuck in inside um, the steerer tube there. But yeah, very nice bike. This is Andre Amador's bike. and. It's also one of the lightest bikes we've come across at the at the race in the World Tour. Um, this one's coming out at 7.2 kilos. We we just weighed it, um, but yeah, it's got the new Vision Vision wheels on it as well. I've got those on uh, on my Canyon at the moment. They're really nice. I just did the the wax chain test on this one. I don't think it's got a wax chain, so um, no gold star for for ES. I'm here with the Tudor Pro Cycling team bike, which is a rather splendid BMC team machine 01. Um, I've got a confession to make viewers. I, I made a boo-boo, which was uh, when I was at the Rouleur show, you may remember I showed you a, a Tudor Pro Cycling bike, which I said was this year's bike. It wasn't, it was actually last year's bike. My bad. Um, you may remember that bike because it was white and red with a rather interesting design on the fork. And it also had white tires, which was quite divisive amongst, uh, amongst you guys. Um, some of you loved it, some of you hated it. But yeah, let us know in the comments whether you preferred that bike with its white tires or this one with its black tires and black and red livery. Uh, interestingly though, you may notice these tires have like a blue edging on them. That's because the mechanics tell me that these Schwalbe Pro One tires are actually a, uh, an improved version with lower rolling resistance and they have this blue bit on them. I'm not sure what that's for, pretty cool nonetheless. Uh, these are mounted on these very nice DT Swiss uh, ARC 1100 wheels with the 180 hubs on them. They're actually available in different depths, but but tomorrow's stage is a, a flat one in the desert, so they're going for 62 mil deep ones. Other cool details on the bike, I mean, they're not new, but the, the bottle cages that kind of integrate the bottle and help make it more aero, very cool. Yeah, I like this bike a lot. Um, interesting thing as well they showed me is that they have a, a Tudor team watch. This is a team issue watch that's only available to you if you're on their team, which I suspect will, in years to come, make this something of a collector's item. It's pretty cool. Nice watch. I'd probably strap mine to the, to the handlebars. Another really cool detail that I just nearly missed was the number mount that's on the D-shaped seat post. It's actually a 3D printed little job, but it's super neat. It's really nice and, and smart. It's, um, well, we're seeing a lot more 3D printed little hacks all over the place in the Pro Peloton. So I'm gonna see if I can find some more. Cool tech for you now, literally cool tech. The riders are wearing cooling ice vests. You can see as they're warming up, a lot of the teams are wearing these and I've noticed that what they do is they have them on the turbo and then they wear them up till they get to the start ramp. They take them off just as they get onto the start ramp. They're trying to keep that core body temperature as cool as possible uh, so that they can maximize their performance. Cooling has become a big thing in pro cycling and well, yeah, it's warm today. 30 degrees here in the port in Abu Dhabi. just spotted a stunning bike on top of Intermarche Circus Wanty team car. This is Rain Tarame's bike for 2023. Look at the paint job on that. Look at it. It's amazing. It's like it's sort of like bronze uh, mirror effect all over the place. 
Also, noticing he's got a 140 rotor on the front. Most riders run 160 on their road bikes. That's the UCI standard, 160 front, 140 at the back. That's what Shimano recommends as well. Uh, ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel on the back as well. Really bling looking bike. I like that. That's my, that's my favorite paint job I've seen so far here. Though so far, I'm digging that one. It's nice. Sudal Quickstep are off last in the time trial today, and they've um, they've just completed their warm up. They're off to the start, and they've left behind their cooling vest. This is cool though. They've got their own like team cooling vests. These are branded up. They say the Wolfpack on them. Look at that. Look, that is really cool. So the teams then, well, this one's been used. I'm not going to smell it. It's uh, probably quite sweaty, so they're warming up in it. But it's not just the cooling vests. You can see they're also using the uh, the classic tried and tested ice cubes in a stocking. Some interesting little details on the custom painted uh, national champions bike of Australian national champion Luke Plapp of Ineos Grenadiers. So the Ineos Grenadiers Pinarello Fs, I've noticed that they're running the Shimano power meter. A lot of them have got bigger chain rings on, which you can see here. So I've not seen these commercially available, but Shimano do make them. And this is a 5644. But what's super interesting is the way they're incorporating the magnet for the Shimano power meter. So normally this is glued onto the frame and then you put a little plastic cover over the top of it. The problem with that is that when you drop your chain, it can sometimes drag that magnet off, um, which then means that you don't have power uh, during the race. So what the Ineos mechanics have cleverly done is actually attached a magnet to a little extension on the chain catcher, which is a K-Edge chain catcher here. I've not seen that done before, but pretty clever and, uh, well, I like it. It's much neater than gluing it to the frame. Other interesting detail that I've spotted, and this is a sneaky little detail, is on the cockpit of the bike, you've got what appears to be the standard out front uh, Most mount that comes for the Pinarello cockpit. However, I used to have one of these, and if we look underneath, you can see that this isn't the standard Most mount because it's been milled out underneath to save weight. So rather than just a solid piece of aluminium, you can see it's cut away. The cockpit's interesting too, because Luke Plapp is one of those riders that's running their shifters slightly inwards. I think we can call that Remco style. And his bar tape is really nice too. It's not got any finishing tape on it. I think it might be reverse wrapped or they've glued it, but it just looks really super neat the way the mechanics have done it without any finishing tape there. I like that. And the other nice thing is his saddle, which is a 3D printed Physique Argo Adaptive. Looks pretty, looks pretty cool. Let's see how much it weighs. 7.64. Is running tubeless tires though. Cool. Cool bit of wearable tech for you here. Um, so this is the day before the race starts here in the UAE, and I've spotted quite a few of the riders with continuous glucose monitors on their arms. You can see the sort of round imprint of it um, underneath their jerseys. Now, during the race, they're banned, so they will take them off before they start racing, uh, but they're fine to train with. It's quite controversial that they've been banned because well, personally, it's not something I agree with because they're a sensor and your power meter and your heart rate monitor are sensors. Yeah, they're allowed. So I don't quite understand that. But um, this is something that we understand riders are using to optimize their nutrition and training so that they can fuel better during races. So if you've not seen these before, it is a, a sensor which you apply to your arm, similar to what diabetics use, but this one is tuned differently for non-diabetics. And then it's just covered up by a patch on your arm and they stay on for two weeks. But yeah, interesting. It, it, all this creates a lot of data, which can be really useful to see if you're fueling, you're underfueled, you're losing weight, all sorts of things. What do you think about this? Should they be banned in races or should they be allowed? Let us know in the comments. Just a quick thing I've spotted as we walk through the paddock. Um, the Vision Metron discs on Merida bikes of Bahrain Victoria. So got a new graphic on the back for the team colours. Looks really cool, doesn't it? Well, they might get confused for Team Ineos as disc wheels with that colourway on. So a lot of the Shimano sponsored teams here, as you will have seen throughout this video, are using the, the sort of non-standard chain rings. Uh, they're using bigger ones, but still made by Shimano. And it's quite interesting. I asked the mechanics about this and they've, they've got one out to show me. The thing that really stands out about it though, is the weight of it. So the sort of Holotech design chain rings like this, that they're just, well, they're really, really light when you have it like that. But 
This one is sort of like a pressed steel design. It's not hollow at all. This one's a 56 tooth outer ring, really heavy. It's like double the weight. So that is gonna be one of the contributing factors is to sort of pro bikes weighing more than the, the UCI limit, which is a kind of consistent thing we're seeing. Something regular viewers of GCN Tech will be familiar with is that I'm always on the lookout for the rider with the biggest stem. So far, this is the biggest I've found here at the UAE Tour. It belongs to Burastenga of uh, Trek Segafredo, and this is his, well, rather rapid looking Trek Madon. That bad boy, 140 millimeters. I know what you're thinking. Ollie, you're a trendy guy. What's that really cool thing you're wearing? Well, this isn't the latest fashion. This is actually an aero base layer that I've spotted quite a few of the teams wearing. So Adam Yates was wearing one of these on stage one. It was sneakily underneath his jersey. On stage two time trial, I saw a few other riders had them underneath their skin suits. The idea is that this textured surface on the arms sticks through the outer layer of the skin suit fabric and reduces uh, the wake behind the arms by tripping the airflow and making it stick to the arm longer. So yeah, pretty, uh, it's like an aero bra. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. Uh, if you have, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, and also, make sure if you want to watch the, the, the UAE Tour and, well, other races, the place to do it is GCN Plus with live uninterrupted coverage and ad-free. And if, if you're not watching it live, if you haven't watched this race live, well, you can catch it up on demand as well, um, which is, which is uh, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go watch some of the races and put some sun cream on. Bye.